coming up tonight on the News at 5. Staffing shortages across Helena Public Schools force Helena High and Capitol High to move to remote learning. Plus... Shows that we're on a really, really um, drastic spike, a really sharp increase in cases. We break down the COVID numbers in Lewis and Clark County. Why health officials are very concerned. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 5. Good afternoon and welcome to the News at 5. I'm Jessica Nelson. Thank you for joining us. Helena public school leaders say ongoing staff shortages have forced them to return Helena and Capitol High Schools to fully remote learning starting next Monday. The two high schools will remain open as planned tomorrow, then close to in-person instruction for the next two weeks. District leaders will make a decision by December 3rd on whether in-person classes can resume on Monday, December 7th. Superintendent Tyler Ream told MTN, the decision is not because of COVID-19 cases within the schools, but only because of the growing number of district employees who can't work in person. Shifting the high schools to online instruction allows them to use high school support staff and substitutes to keep K through eight schools open. District leaders believe that is the best way to minimize the impact on families. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian is following this story and we'll have more details coming up tonight at six. A composite of state and locally reported data shows Montana cases of COVID-19 increased to just over 52,700 cases, with more than 18,000 of those cases currently active. Four additional deaths have been reported, bringing the state total to 586. As COVID-19 cases escalate in Montana, the disparity between state data from DPHHS and local data from county health departments continues to grow. MTN has decided to use a combination of these sources to deliver more accurate information across all media platforms. Local county health departments may be alerted to cases before Montana DPHHS. As those counties share that information with the public, MTN feels it should be reflected in our reporting. Using that local data means there will be times when MTN coronavirus data does not align with the state report. Now we are also consulting with health leaders to put that data into perspective. MTN's John Riley spoke with Lewis and Clark Public Health to see what numbers people should be paying the most attention to as cases continue to rise and also what those numbers mean for the community. As of Thursday, 2,048 COVID cases have been confirmed in Lewis and Clark County since the pandemic began, which equals around 3% of the population and enough people to fill every seat at the Helena Cinemark. Lewis and Clark Public Health says they always knew there was going to be cases, but a big concern right now is that 84% of all cases confirmed in the county have happened since the beginning of October. The latest data shows that we're on a really, really um, drastic spike and a really sharp increase in cases. The daily new case incidence shows how many COVID cases are confirmed through testing. Right now, Lewis and Clark County is 11 times higher than the national average, and Montana is the fourth highest in the country. The majority of people that contract the disease are able to weather at home. However, right now, one in 20 Montanans that get the virus have needed to be hospitalized. And the increased risk factors for hospitalization are common in the state. One in 10 Montanans are living with diabetes, one in four are considered obese, and one in six Montanans are over the age of 65. The virus is also putting a strain on the hospital in more ways than one. More people are needing to be hospitalized, but also more nurses and doctors are also getting the virus too. Not experiencing spread within that setting. What's happening is people are exposed in the community and it's impacting the hospital's ability to have the adequate staff to support this community. Neiman says there are some new bright spots too. Therapeutics for treating the virus have drastically improved and two vaccines, the key to ending the pandemic, have been announced. Although realistically, we're still many months away from a vaccine being readily available to everyone. Wearing a mask, limiting interaction to those who live outside your home, and not going to work while sick are the best tools we have right now to making sure there's no more empty tables at holiday gatherings next year. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. All right, time now for a check of our forecast. 
Curtis. Well, good uh, afternoon, Jessica. Good afternoon, everybody. I had a little in the way of some uh, snow showers, enough to just coat the roads in a few areas. Here's a look at the road surface around East Glacier. Uh, places like Lincoln have been hit pretty hard. Flesher Pass, Rogers Pass, also McDonald Pass, really kind of close to the mountains here in western Montana. Not much of anything east of the mountains here, but a uh, little snow out there right now, but looking ahead, I do not see much in the way of snow in the uh, near and distant future. What I do see though, and what we all will see is a lot of vitamin D. Yeah, some nice sunshine uh, here, which is not that common uh, to see so much sunshine in the month of November and Thanksgiving now a week away and that bird may fly away for some folks. More on the forecast coming up. As the pandemic rages on in Cascade County, many public health officials are finding themselves in the spotlight a lot more than usual. People like Dr. Raymond Geyer, an infectious disease specialist who's been at the Great Falls Clinic for 30 years. He spoke with MTN Zach Shermley about the spiking coronavirus cases in Cascade County and what you can do to slow the spread. He is so intelligent and he brings such wisdom. He is a incredible assets to this community. In his 30th year, I'm going to make it through the day, I think. Yep. A doctor's career. Mm -hmm. I can't say enough good things about Dr. Geyer. That started with good teachers. I had the right teachers at the right time. Preparing him to teach a community. 1,500 new cases, One, roughly one third of them were in Cascade County. He's able to bring in information and digest it and present it in a very user-friendly way. Cascade County sitting solidly as the second most active case county. About a deadly virus. I thought, oh, damn it, another virus. When the pandemic first hit back in March, he did a lot of asking. What is this and what is it really going to be? Now he's doing most of the answering. February or March, I think we clearly knew we had something that met the criteria for pandemic. A member of the County Board of Health. We are so lucky to have him on our board. He's pushed for some tough decisions. Limiting size of restaurants that already are small to begin with, for instance. I know that creates pain. And one thing we can do is go back to these places of business and be a customer. As hospitals meet capacity. What can we do? What can we convince our citizens to do that can slow down the rate of infection, that otherwise leads to people going to the hospital, maybe there's no bed for them. But still, he has hope. The end is kind of around the corner. Wear a mask, watch your distance, and wash your hands. In Great Falls, Zach Shermley, MTN News. Today was supposed to be the first day of high school winter sports practices, but back in October, the Montana High School Association announced that start date would move back to December 7th. Last winter, swimming and wrestling crowned state champions before the coronavirus hit, but many basketball teams at state tournaments were not able to play their final games. Now they face an extended wait to get going again. Actual games won't start until January at the earliest. And with so many schedules still in flux, coaches, are spending as much time worrying about coronavirus logistics as they are developing their teams. You're anxious because you're ready to start your season. You're you're anxious because, you know, when we do get going, are we doing the right thing? Um, you know, we worry about our kids. We worry about, um, you know, their families. We worry about all that stuff. And it, I think it just adds a level of anxiety to this that you, you normally have when you start a season. But I think this year is obviously uh, very much different. And, you know, it's it's... It's unique. Um, you know, it's it's disappointing that we get to start on time, but um, it's also it's the way it is. As the Carroll College men's basketball team gets ready to host their first home game of the season, they received some bad news yesterday. The stands of the PE Center will be nearly empty. On November 13th, the Frontier Conference stated in their return to play policy that no spectators will be allowed at conference sporting events until 2021. Carroll College Athletics confirmed in a press release they will not allow spectators at Friday's match up against Dickinson State, those spectators will not be able to attend games in person. Carroll College Athletics will be streaming their games live on their YouTube channel. Okay, when we come back, Curtis gives us a full forecast update and later step into the shoes of a healthcare worker during a global pandemic. That full story after the break. 
Weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. All right, welcome back everybody. A lot of sunshine for some folks. A few flakes of snow flying for those folks that want some snow where they want it. Uh, Great Falls, so actually this is from Geyser looking at the high woods, but uh, a really beautiful sky out there right now. The sun going down, a little chill in the air. 36 degrees southwest wind, 15 miles per hour. Helena had some snow showers go through the area, including the valley. 38 degrees with a northwest wind about 8 miles per hour. Woo, a little chilly air up towards the North Haver now down to 18 degrees. More of this cold air will kind of work its way across the northeast part of the state here tonight. Everybody will be chilly, but uh, northeast Montana, as I'll show you the lows here coming up, uh, will be the coldest location. The wind, all right, it's a little pesky out there, making for uh, a slight chill and still a winter weather advisory here for parts of western Montana as the snow showers continue. Uh, on the radar here, Come on, radar, work. Uh, we've got a few snow showers. There we go. Uh, most of them, the snow showers, that is, staying in the higher terrain of western Montana. But at times, some of these snow showers are pushing down into the lower elevations. Boy, this was a really nice snow squall right here that uh, was hitting the Lincoln area in the Blackfoot Valley very hard. That extended all the way to uh, Wolf Creek Canyon. If you have to travel Wolf Creek Canyon this evening or tomorrow morning, could be a little slick. And you can see some of that snow working towards Great Divide. Canyon Creek as well, but that's pretty good snow band and a few of these snow bands will continue over the next few hours. Great falls in areas across north central Montana should be OK. And once again, the areas that people want to see snow like Teton Pass are getting some of that snow. The big picture, very quiet here across the country. Storm systems moving across the northern tier of the United States and southern Canada. So here's what will happen tonight. There may be a couple of snow showers out around the high woods. Also Lewistown here tonight. There's a little upper disturbance that's uh, moving through, but most of the snow showers around uh, Helena and the western mountains should diminish here through the overnight hours. And Friday looking like a pretty fine day with mostly sun these skies a little on the cool side and a bit of a breeze. But again, here we are in the latter half of November and all things pretty much good when you've got some sunshine and comfortable temperatures when it's not 20 degrees below zero. So Friday looking good. Saturday also looking pretty good. Mostly sunny skies, maybe a snow shower into the bear paws, the little Rockies and the big snowies. Otherwise, that's a pretty nice weekend that is setting up here for a lot of the state. Additional snow a couple inches at best here into the western mountains. Let's look long range all the way into Thanksgiving Day, shall we? So a couple of, of snow showers tonight. I'm going all the way into Monday. Just showed you the weekend. Does look uh, pretty good Saturday and Sunday. A few snow showers in the western mountains on Monday. Tuesday a bit warmer out ahead of this next storm. Now Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, there likely will be a front coming through here with a period of some mixed rain and snow. Certainly a lot of wind on Wednesday that could uh, affect travel a little bit. But here we are, 1:30 on Thanksgiving afternoon. A little breezy but it will be mostly sunny and comfortable with temperatures in the upper 30s to around 40 degrees all the way into Black Friday, looking at a bit of a warm up. Friday and Saturday temperatures may go up into the 40s and the 50s. Tonight, pretty chilly, snow showers in the western mountains. We get Rudyard down to eight, Haver likely down into the single digits, single digits, low teens, northeast Montana. Elsewhere, generally in the 20s to about 30 degrees. Here's the forecast for tomorrow. Mostly sunny skies. There will be some snow up there around Glacier, Marias Pass, but out the High Line, a little breezy. Upper 30s to the low 40s. Again, really not that bad uh, for this time of year. And here's the seven day forecast for Helena. Helena taking you all the way into Thanksgiving. Uh, the numbers a little cooler this weekend, but still it's mostly sunny over the next three days. Mostly cloudy Monday and Tuesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday. Again, maybe a little mix of some rain and snow. And I'm thinking right around 40 with mostly sunny skies for Thanksgiving and for Great Falls. A little breezy the next few days. That's uh, for sure all the way into Monday and Tuesday. But Thanksgiving looks pretty nice. We're all thinking of the healthcare workers as this new surge of coronavirus spreads across the country. We hear from two of them who treat COVID patients daily. They say they're using what they learned in March, April and May to better treat people today. 
If there is anyone to help navigate the uncertainty hospitals have faced since spring. It has been very busy and it has really, as you mentioned, gone up in the last two weeks. Dr. Julia Limes is it. My second year of residency was the Aurora Theater shooting and I was on I was the ICU resident that night. That night, she helped manage the response to a disaster that forced police officers to use their patrol cars as ambulances when a gunman killed 12 people at a movie theater in Colorado and injured 70 more. An unprecedented situation that has brought clarity to the one she finds herself in now. We have started deploying um, people from other parts of the hospital to come and help us on both the COVID floors and the COVID ICU. Across the country, hospitalizations from COVID-19 are rising fast. We've already surpassed the numbers from the first surge. So we're kind of like, okay, what's next? For critical care nurses like Maddie Smith, the fear, stress, unpredictability might have consumed her once more if it wasn't for the lessons learned in this very COVID unit you see before you. We just know how to treat them better and we know when to intervene like sooner versus later with you know different interventions. So that's been really helpful. Because of the dangerous nature of what is in here, the hospital shot this video for us. It shows the practice of undeniable strides that have been made in hospitals since March. Medications to treat COVID symptoms are available. Vaccines are being developed with remarkable effectiveness. And the arc of how a patient might respond to symptoms is now better known. It's easier and it's smoother than it was in the spring. Dr. Lyme says it allows them to manage bed space better and adds a critical element to care, composure, that can be seen in how patients are treated and how these first responders treat themselves. It was hard. I mean, I think the biggest part that got to all of us was that these people, they don't have family to be with. That first surge, it all hit us pretty hard because of the um, sadness that, you know, what happened down here. Um, so, yeah, we just kind of leaned on each other and got through it. But it was, it was tough. How far this current wave will go is unknown, but by drawing from the past, these first responders know they'll be ready to deal with it, no matter what is thrown their way. We just have a better sense of the trajectory and that that is hugely valuable, I think, as we go into this next surge. I'm Dan Grossman reporting. Coming up next on the News at 5, traditional Thanksgiving meals at shelters will look a little different this year. I'll explain when we come back. Montana's news leader. You're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back with us. The coronavirus has changed the way Helena Food Share runs their annual turkey challenge. Starting tomorrow, the turkey challenge will go live virtually. This year, because of COVID-19 concerns, the Helena Food Share is asking people to donate money instead of turkeys. Due to an increased need, Helena Food Share would like to raise enough money to purchase 2,500 turkeys. It's easy to do. You just head to HelenaFoodShare.org. You click on the amount you want to donate, anywhere from $25 to $500, and Helena Food Share takes care of the rest. Just $25 will provide one meal for a family in need. Great Falls Rescue Mission is preparing for a very different Thanksgiving this year because of the pandemic. While the food for Great Falls Rescue Mission's Thanksgiving meals are traditional this year, the distribution of the food will not be. Instead, on Tuesday, it will be used to hand out take-home Thanksgiving meals to the families who have registered for one. Then on Thanksgiving Day, instead of inviting the community in for a sit-down meal, ready-to-eat meals will be handed out on a first-come, first-served basis at the men's shelter. The rescue mission is preparing for up to 600 people. We do ask anybody that's coming for the meal at 1245 to social distance, six feet apart in a line, wear a mask, and... Uh, Love your neighbor. Get along. If you would like to help, the rescue mission is still in need of green beans, yams or potatoes, stovetop stuffing and dinner rolls. All right, up next, I'll show you the world's largest vending machine filled with cars. When we welcome our West Coast viewers tonight, the CDC with an urgent warning to Americans expecting to travel this Thanksgiving. Also, are we overdoing it with the constant spraying and wiping? What experts say about the coronavirus surface threat when we see you for NBC Nightly News. From Montana's news leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. 
Carvana's tallest car vending machine opened for business this week. The new high rise stretches 12 stories into the skyline of Atlanta. Carvana says the building can hold up to 43 vehicles at a time. Customers can use the machine to buy a vehicle and pick it up in as little as five minutes. People living in Atlanta or anywhere Carvana has a vending machine can also choose touchless home delivery. Once bought, Carvana says customers have seven days to return their vehicles. Wow. All right. That's all for us this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Nightly News is next.